When I was in school, I had a difficult time because I'm dyslexic. Um, believe it or not, I wasn't diagnosed until I was 21 in the last year of a degree in applied economics, of all things. So when I was in school, I was told that I'd have to work very hard to get a C at my GCSEs if I was to achieve it. I also you know, remember going to see a careers advisor, and I always knew what my dreams were. My dreams were to be an entrepreneur, to start multiple businesses, and to help people, and to put helping people in my businesses above making money. So I told you know, a short version of that to a careers advisor, and I was told that, do you know, starting a business probably isn't for you. You should go and get a job in the factory around the corner because um, you haven't chose business and it's not going to work for you. So that's what I was told in school. And again, it didn't help that my handwriting looks like a spider has walked across the page. I can't particularly spell. And I don't, to this day, really understand grammar, if I'm being completely honest with you. So yeah, the odds were stacked against me, you could say. And I'd put my confidence at that point fairly low because of the negative experiences that I had. <clears throat> but my changing point and what gave me my inspiration and what helped me progress as an individual was music. So I'm sure everybody in this room today likes music. I'm sure we all like different variations, but again, I'm sure everyone can relate to hearing their favorite song and getting that buzz from it. For me, the music that I fell in love with, the music that changed my life was reggae and hip hop. So people like Tupac, people like Bob Marley, Dennis Brown, Pete Tosh, Jacob Miller. I really loved music that had a conscious message and I'd find myself sitting there listening to the inspiration, listening to the lyrics, focusing on the positive message that my music was giving me. And if you can imagine, it's in complete contrast to the message I was getting in school, if you like. So whereas I had a lot of negative um, energy, for better a word, put on me, my music was telling me to be positive, to believe in myself, to reap what I sow, to work hard. So that's what I chose to listen to. I listened to my music, I took inspiration from that, and I worked out at a young age, it would be better to have that positive feeling of proving people wrong, rather than dropping out of school with no qualifications, getting a job in the local factory, and basically proving them right. So I've got a few short extracts from two songs. It was very difficult to get it down to two songs, but they're two songs that particularly inspired me. Uh, the first is a song by Tupac, Me Against the World. And what I'd say is, if there are any, um, any people in the audience who maybe don't appreciate rap music, I just ask you, and I challenge you really, to read the lyrics and to, you know, to see their intellectual qualities as well. So, only a short extract there, but what that song kind of taught me is that no one, if you like, is a genius. So you might have seen the lyric there, even a genius asks questions. So when I was growing up, I asked a lot of questions, and this basically reaffirmed to me that, you know, no one is perfect, no one kind of is a genius, if you like, and that it was okay to, to question things. And that, again, added to my confidence and gave me a lot of self-belief. And then there's another song. This one is by Bob Marley, and it's called Positive Vibration. So again, what this song kind of taught me is to be positive. And that's, I guess that's the essence of my story. You know, we have to be positive. We have to believe in ourselves if we want to progress to achieve our dreams. Say you just can't live that negative way If you know what I mean Make way for the positive day Cause it's news, news and days New time And if it's a new feeling Look here, said it's a new sign Oh, what a new day I should say it was really hard for me not to actually sing along to them then. So, <laughs> so yeah, they're, they're just two examples, okay, of how, you know, the type of music that I listened to and how it basically inspired me and, and raised my confidence. And e even to this day, you know, throughout my journey, throughout my life, music is still one of the biggest influences. You know, I'm the kind of person who I'll, I'll nip to the shop in my car and I'll spend half an hour picking four songs for the journey. You know, it still really is a big factor in my life. And 
I used music to start a business when I was 18 at university. I mean, I wanted to start a magazine about music, but I ended up becoming a pre professional DJ and starting a music and events business. And what happened is we put on a fundraiser to raise money for, to start this magazine. And you know, me and my friend, we fancied ourselves as DJs, so we put ourselves down for a six-hour set. And we thought we might raise 50 pounds for the magazine. We happened to raise a lot more. And again, we saw the opportunity there, and both of us thought, nah, forget the magazine, you know, let's, let's try and do this. So again, I accidentally became a professional reggae and hip hop DJ, and I ended up starting a business where we organized music events all around the country. I had the pleasure of playing at you know, some of the biggest music festivals in the country. And the biggest thing for me, and on my scale of confidence, if you like, and self-belief, was that I literally went from sitting in a kitchen listening to you know this reggae and hip-hop that inspired me to DJing with the artist that had inspired me and it all happened in the space of a few weeks and for me that really showed me that you know if if we're willing to put ourselves out there out of our comfort zone and trust me there's nothing more out of your comfort zone and DJing to like 500 people and taking the needle off the wrong record you know when everyone's looking at you and you, you think it's playing just in your headphones that is embarrassing okay and I thought to myself well you know, I've done that. I've made a success of that business. What I really want to do now, to prove my theory, if you like, that we can all follow our dreams, we can all be successful if we're confident, if we believe in ourselves, and if we're not afraid to work out of our comfort zone, I went back to an idea that I had when I was 14. It was an idea that I didn't have the confidence to tell the careers advisor about, but I'm going to tell you how it came about right now. And for me, it was my eureka moment. It really changed everything. And it's how I went on to, again, win multiple awards, um, be featured in numerous newspapers, etc. And the idea is a basic one, and I'm, I'm sure everyone can relate to it. <clears throat> so I was trying to revise for my GCSEs. And again, being dyslexic and not knowing it and trying to learn Macbeth is a bit of a challenge. And I'd always put my music on, again, like the songs you just saw there. I put them on to inspire me and to help me get in that kind of positive mind frame. And one day, I'm just there, you know, doing revision to Macbeth and song on the radio. And without knowing, I sung it all back without thinking about it. Sung every word to this song. And a light bulb went off in my mind and I thought, wow, how do I know the words to that song, having never ever tried to remember them, yet I've got no, I couldn't tell you anything about Macbeth. So I thought that is amazing. You know, the subconscious, the power again of music to get them lyrics embedded in my mind is a really special thing. And I thought to myself, well, if Macbeth, if algebra, if Pythagoras were turned into contemporary music songs, surely young people like myself and young people in general would be able to remember the key learning points. You know, I mean, A grade students, for example, could use it just to, to memorize. Uh, students maybe not even sit in GCSEs could use it to break down the barrier for a book such as Of Mice and Men and actually think, well, that's a great story, I want to read that book. So a bit of a crazy idea, some people said to me, or a lot of people said to me, in fact. But I thought to myself, if I can put that into practice, if I can make a success of that idea, I will earn the right to tell people my philosophy, if you like, of what it takes to be successful. So eight years ago, I did just that. I started a business and we created a brand called Learn Through Music. So to illustrate what I mean, and to prove that it's not me on the piano going one plus one is two, I'm now gonna play you a short sample of one of our songs. The next verse is all about volume and area. No need to be afraid or kick up any hysteria. Perimeter is the sum of all lengths of a shape side. A compound shape's made up of more than one shape, right? Maybe a rectangle, triangle combined into one or the above combination with a square added on. This verse is quite simple. It and you can see we, we've added the lyric video here. So we've got the whole audio and visual learning. So obviously everyone learns in a different way. Individually calculate to figure out the area of a triangle type. The formula is half times, base times half. Take this information in, don't show any resistance A triangle's height is the perpendicular distance Parallelogram area, base times height C, trapeziums are half times height Times A plus B But for circles, radius, circumference Diameter and height need to be used in abundance C equals pi D or 2 pi R Area is pi R squared like raw Rectangular area is length times width or half So, no one needs to worry, I'm not going to test you on that, okay? So that, that's just a little sample, and we, you know, we've gone on to cover you know, most of the syllabus for English, maths and science, and it's been used by over 30,000 people. 
And what struck me was, again, the immense power of music and the fact that everyone could relate to it. Everyone I kind of told the idea to was like, oh, I can remember making up my own songs. I always remember the words to my favorite songs. So I knew I was on to kind of, you know, utilizing the power of music for, well, for the benefit of all. And I had a bit of a breakthrough, if you like, to diversify what we do and to help more people. And I was approached um, by the Prince's Trust, who I had support from to start my business. And they asked me to come up with a concept where maybe we could try and teach people some of, the, some of the skills I'm talking about now, really, you know, how to be confident, how to believe in yourself, but also how to improve your literacy, your reading and writing. And again, being a creative slash crazy person, I came up with the idea of using songwriting, music production, performance skills to help improve people's confidence, to help improve their reading and writing. So we came up with a concept called Learn Through Music Courses. And the idea was if I could kind of capture some of the um, things that happened to me on my journey, the positive things, and put that in a course so we could help teach other people and help kind of progress them so they realized that they also had the potential to kind of achieve their true potential and their dreams. So we launched Learn Through Music Courses a few years back and we've now worked with over 5,000 people. So I've got a short video which you'll see and you'll just see how, how we achieve that. Something to point out is if you, if you can listen to the words of the song that is in the background. It was written by young people who took part in the course. And what you'll see is it's, um, it's focusing on some of the message that I've spoke about today. So being positive, for example. Or you'll be in pain. Be consistent, confident about your life. Be positive, not negative. Don't think twice. Have passion, have faith, have feelings, have dreams. We'll all stick together and win as a team. We run these courses all over the UK and with a really wide range of um, individuals from young people who might struggle in education to adults with learning difficulties and disabilities to CEOs of multinational companies and it always amazes me how we always get the same reaction, how it's improved people's confidence and how they've got a positive association from working out of their comfort zone doing the performance and getting that buzz from actually achieving something. I mean you can see there as well with some of the feedback. It's, it's probably the biggest buzz, to be honest, I get from, from the job that I do. So seeing, seeing the influence rub off on young people and seeing someone who may be on the first day is really struggling with their confidence. They're in a, a really bad place, but seeing them go through the process, seeing them kind of progress on their personal journey and at the end of the course, they're buzzing and they realise that, like everybody, they have the potential to achieve their dreams. I'm going gonna to leave you with, a, with an anecdote which, for me, you know, it summed up how far I've come on my journey. So about six years ago, when we were just kind of launching our first product, we needed to get our message to, well, two million people in 5,000 schools. Being quite young at the time, it was quite a daunting uh, prospect. I needed an opportunity. I needed a bit of luck. And I was invited again by the Prince's Trust to meet the Prime Minister. So at the time, I will stress that I hadn't done any public speaking. So you might think, oh, well, this guy seems quite you know, relaxed at Pierre Fury was fine. Trust me, it was the opposite. It was, this was my first experience of truly being out of my comfort zone and the world of public speaking. So I was invited to a, a conference where Prime Minister was there, the world's press, and about 400 people. And I'm sat in the front row, and when I get there, the director of the Prince's Trust says to me, oh, Nate, have you got your question ready for the Prime Minister? And like I said, in my opinion, to progress, to reach our potential, we need to be confident, or at least give the ear of confidence. So I said, yeah, yeah, I've got my question, yep, yep, all practised. In reality, I didn't, okay? I, did, and I, I swear to this day, he didn't tell me in advance. But I sat in the audience thinking, um, like a lot of us do, I'm sure everyone can again relate to this, okay? When we, if we've got a job interview, or maybe when we sat our driving test, or anything that scares us, we automatically think the negative oh, I can't do it, I can't do it, I'm going to fail, I'm going to mess this up. Okay, so I'm sat there thinking that, thinking I'm going to faint, I'm going to fall over, how am I going to do this? But I also thought to myself, look, you know, on this journey of progressing to where I want to be, I'm going to have to do things that scare me. Okay, even if they scare me so much, I think I might faint, I'm going to have to do it. No one else is going to do it. You know, we all have help along the way. But at the end of the day, to really achieve our potential, to really follow our dreams, we're going to have to be the ones that actually steps up, or in this case, stands up. 
So I came to the end of the conference and I had my opportunity to ask the question. And I stood up in front of all these people without a question and I, I needed a bit of inspiration, I needed a bit of luck. And behind the Prime Minister, I said, make Britain's future better. And I thought to myself, well, that's quite a good hook. I'll start with that. So I said, Prime Minister, I'm here to help you make Britain's future better. I've created this concept called Learn Through Music to help young people learn the syllabus. Instantly, everyone goes whoosh and turns around and the cameras go. But what happened is the Prime Minister endorsed me. He said he really liked the concept. And at the end of that press conference, I was given his business card. And if that wasn't good enough, as I go to leave, I'm stopped by these two gentlemen on the door. Honestly, I thought it was MI5 because I was trying to give him a demo CD. But <laughs> it was the press association. And they said to me, look, that was amazing what you just did. We want to hear more about you. So I end up sitting down, giving my own press conference, if you like, telling them about Learn Through Music and a short snippet of my journey. What happened then was I was in every newspaper, most TV channels, publications such as The Times Education. I was even doing uh, radio interviews for you know, um, RTE in Ireland in the middle of a DJ set. So it was quite a, quite a crazy time, but it had the effect I wanted it to. It helped you know, get the business, get the concept into the public domain, and it, it helped us to sell our first packages. And you know, I, I tell this story to a lot of young people, and I say, look, that sums up what my message is all about. So in life, you know, if all of us want to progress to the point where we reach our true potential, you know, we, we've all got dreams, but I think the difference between people that get out there and achieve their dreams and achieve their potential and progress to the point where they're happy with themselves is one, you have to be confident. But again, you don't get confident unless you put yourself out there in experiences that scare you. And I think, you know, the more experiences you have that scare you, you get that buzz. You know, from going out of your comfort zone, you get a buzz, you get a positive association. And I really believe that the more positive associations you get, the, the less barriers you face on the route to achieving your dream. And what I say to everybody is, look, if, if I can achieve my dreams, you know, then there's nothing stopping anybody at the end of the day. If you work hard, believe in yourself, stay confident, make opportunities, take the opportunities, you'll be successful. So, Dielchen Val, thank you very much for listening to me. Thank you.